All right, now that the outer coat of the driveway sealant and filler has dried, um, painted that, if you remember, on the inside and out. And again, it's just hard as a rock. It's just helped add an additional layer of protection and give it uh, another hard coat. I've also went ahead and painted the inside. I don't know if you can see that. All I do is just take some spray paint, um, safety yellow, bright yellow. You could also use a bright orange, red, whatever uh, floats your boat. Um, I do paint that just so that it provides an additional glow when you have a light in here. Uh, also kind of misdirects the eye on where the bulb actually is because the inside will glow. If you were to leave that black, that black's gonna do nothing but absorb your light. Uh, where the yellow or any other bright color is going to help bounce that around and, and give this a nice glow uh, when you light it up. So I do highly recommend just stick your, he your hand in there with your spray can and just shoot it all around and get the inside good and painted. Do that first. As you can see, you will get some overspray coming out the eyes and the mouth. So do that before you paint your exterior. All uh, we're going to do now is begin painting the outside of this, I'm going to begin by giving it some low lights. Uh, picked up some blue that was on clearance, so I thought, what the heck, why not uh, give it some some blue? I'm not sure if it's going to turn out good or not. We'll find out. If not, just paint over it. Uh, we'll also be using brown and just some some standard orange that I've got. Got some other brown and white. And we're going to use the white because we're going to bring up the the orange for the final dry brushing. And not necessarily going to dry brush at this point, uh, putting this blue down, because I'm going to get some of the blue down inside these ridges. So that way when we go over it with everything else, uh, it's just going to become part of the background. So uh, right now, that's all this is. It's going to be a low light. It's going to be something in addition to the black that we already have. I know it's kind of dulled everything out, but you can still see we've got a lot of texture going on here. And once we dry brush that, it's going to make everything pop and bring it to life. I'm just going to shoot some of this blue out, a little bit on the brush. And with this being a flat black, uh, even though this is a very bright blue, as it dries, it's going to bring this down anyway. So. Um, Starting off a little bit brighter color is going to work in my favor as it dries. So I'm just going to come in here and hit some of this area. I'm not really going to cover the entire pumpkin. That's not my goal. I'm just wanting to get a little bit of this in here just to create an additional layer and some additional character to it as we move forward. It's going to help accent some of these ridges and define some of these areas as we move forward. Not tried the blue before, so I thought it might make it interesting and might just add a little bit more to it. So it could be a failure. That's the beauty of paint. Just paint right over it. Don't ever be afraid to experiment because you're not sure where it's going to where it'll lead you and you might wind up with something absolutely terrific in the end that you weren't counting on. As you can see, I'm not worried about getting the tops of these ridges anywhere with this blue because the one we dry brush with these other colors, that's what's going to pop and highlight those areas. So it's pointless really focusing on anything other than the low spots with this since I'm trying to achieve just a undertone and kind of a low light, so to speak, versus a highlight. Well, they might do it just enough. We can get that hint of it as we move forward. And I'm probably just going to take some of this brown. And some of this orange. 
go ahead and mix it up a little bit. Give me something else here to work with. All I'm going to do is just gradually bring this lighter and lighter and lighter as we proceed. Now I've got this thing loaded up quite a bit just because I'm trying to mix that up, so I'm going to try to knock some of that off as much as I can. Grab some of this leftover newspaper. Get this out of the brush. And all we're going to do is just kind of get this. Nothing special. See, all everything is just real quick. Not much thought to it. Put too much thought to it. I find that I always mess it up if I think about it way too much. You can always overthink something. Never forget, it's art. You can't screw up art. And you're always going to be your own worst critic. So. And you can see as we do this, it's just all those creases and everything are just coming to life. They're really starting to pop because you can see the, the black underneath creating those additional shadows. It's where that paper towel really helped out because it just it gave us a tremendous amount of texture to work with that we didn't necessarily have before doing that. dry a little bit that way we can keep on with the building up the layers otherwise if we keep on adding the layers on this without it being good and dry uh, it's just going to muddy everything up and we won't really get those highlights so uh, real quick wash down on it let it dry we'll hit it with the next color all right once that first layer has gotten a chance to dry we're going to go ahead and continue our dry brushing and I'm just going to get it a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter with uh, each layer which is doing nothing more than just creating some additional depth and really accentuating all of the nooks and crannies of this. I'm also with each layer going to get this brush drier and drier so that way I'm putting less and less paint on here and just being able to, to hit just the high points all of these creases. All right, I'm just going to let this set up just for a little bit, and then I'm going to continue with a little bit lighter, um, and at that point, just hitting the very, very tips of these creases just to add a little bit more dimension of depth to it. And I'll take a look at it, see if I'm satisfied, and should be about wrapped up at this point. Um, I'm not a big fan of the whole literal aspect of a pumpkin having to be orange um, and a stem being green. Uh, I do tend to make mine all one. Sometimes what I'll do is I may try to differentiate the stem just slightly from the face 
by maybe making it a little bit lighter, concentrating on it a little bit more with the highlights, more than what I would on this, just to make it different, or just the opposite, make it quite a bit darker than the base by maybe adding a little bit more brown to it versus the, the orange. But as you see, I really go for, for more of an organic look. Um, I mean, truly, is there really a pumpkin out there that looks like this? No, but we're going for a scare factor, so. So I'm just gonna add some white to this orange just to brighten it up a little bit more. And then we'll go with a pretty dry brush and hit these high points. I think that's it. I'm pretty pleased with this one. Of course, with the light inside this, this thing is just going to glow and should look fantastic. So once this dries, um, what I will do at that point is I will give this a very good coat of spar varnish. This is available in many different brands. Um, it's going to be in your hardware store near your wood stains. So spar varnish is a, a very good outdoor exterior um, sealant. Uh, it's used for boats and many other applications to seal wood. So what I'll do is I'll give that a complete coat on the outside. I will also pour some of this on the inside upside down and turn this all over until I've got the inside completely coated. And from there, I'm good to go for uh, any outdoor display. I've done that with every one of them and really haven't had any issues in all types of weather uh, with any of my paper mache products uh, so far. So uh, once again, once you get this painted and you're happy with it, give it a coat of spar varnish if you're going to have this outdoors and you should be good to go. I hope you've learned something from this. Uh, if anything, hopefully I've shared a couple tips and tricks that you haven't seen or heard of that will make your project go a little bit easier. It's been great. See you Halloween. Usually if you grab it, you get a get hold of it and start twisting it around, you can start falling shit.